Okay, so today we are going to start chapter 18. Uh, if you remember in chapter 17, which we did last week, we looked uh, at, the, at the goods and the financial market and we added openness to it, basically. Uh, but remember what I said at the end of that discussion was that this was, that was a very preliminary look at the effect of openness on the goods and financial markets. So what we are going to do now in chapter 18 and 19 is do a bit of a deep dive into it. So chapter 18, today we will look at the goods market only and what happens when we add openness to it. And then next week in chapter 19, we are going to look at the financial market and what happens when we introduce openness to it. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder that chapter 18 completes the syllabus for the midterm. Okay, uh, so this uh, six, is it six? Or do we also have chapter 19 in the mid? Uh, just... uh, yes, uh, five chapters actually. So these five chapters that we have done, starting with chapter 14, 15, 16, 17 and now 18. These five chapters are your midterm syllabus. Uh, so, you know, uh, get prepared whenever you want. But coming back to chapter 18. So remember when we talked about demand in chapter three, okay? So in chapter three, which was on the goods market, we talked about demand for goods, which we call ZZ, if you remember. And we talked both about domestic demand for goods and demand for domestic goods. And when you have a closed economy, uh, when you're just trading with the people of your country, they're effectively the same thing, right? But when we open up the economy, so let's think about Bangladesh and India. In Bangladesh, we consume both Bangladeshi goods, but also Indian goods. So domestic demand for goods and demand for domestic goods are no longer the same thing when we have an open economy, right? So if you take the first one, so domestic demand for goods, I mean, it's goods and services, but just writing goods for, the, for, for simplicity. Uh, so domestic demand of goods can be written uh, with this. Uh, Z is a demand, remember, which is equal to C plus I plus G. And we have seen this in chapter three. We've modified this in chapter five, but this is sufficient. This is the demand that we have for goods from our country, from the people of this country, okay? But we need to contrast this with demand for domestic goods. This is a demand that, that isn't necessarily limited to the people of this country, but also people from other countries who have demand for our goods. So think of RMG, Bangladesh is a net uh, exporter of RMG. So demand for domestic goods, demand for uh, domestically produced RMG is you know, it comes from Bangladesh, of course, but it also comes from the rest of the world. Rest of the world is not represented in this diagram. And so straight away, that's why we see that this and this are no longer the same when we have an open economy. So the way we are going to define this demand for domestic goods is by doing this. So nothing changes in the first three term, C plus I plus G. But then we are going to subtract import and we're going to add export, okay? So remember export, uh, just in case some of you don't know, import is when we, when we buy foreign goods, And export is when we sell domestic goods to some other country. Okay, so these are 
international trades effectively. So that's what we have done. We have added these two terms into our demand equation. Okay, but now we have to be careful about one thing, okay? So export, let me use another ink. When we're talking about export, uh, that's basically when we're selling goods to, let's say we take RNG and we sell it to USA, let's say. So when we're selling it, we are paid in Taka. We receive Taka, right? And all of this, if we're talking about Bangladesh, then everything, how much we're consuming, how much we're investing, how much government expenditure is, all of this will be cited in Taka. So that's fine. But when we're importing, when we're buying goods from another country, let's say we're buying Indian uh, onions, for example, uh, then we have to pay Indian sellers. And so we will pay in rupee, the Indian currency. We can no longer pay in Dhaka. So you see that all these four are uh, stated in Taka, but not import. So what we are going to do is we are going to divide this with uh, E. And if you remember, E is the real exchange rate. We've already talked about this in some details in the previous chapter. So this is what we have, okay? Let me just rewrite this or just uh, remove all the markings so that we can talk about it a bit more. So why are we adding export? Why are we subtracting import? That's because Z, remember, is demand of goods and services. So export uh, means that there is a demand for our goods in the rest of the world. So it has to be added, right? Uh, let me write down the full form. Demand for goods. And why are we uh, subtracting M? Because we, when we consider consumption, we are adding everything that we're consuming. But out of this, out of this consumption that we have had, some of the goods, are were brought into this country from some other country. That is not demand for domestic good, right? So we have to subtract this amount. And when we do that, we get Z. Okay. Uh, and remember that uh, this equation is what we had in chapter three, but in chapter five, we had expanded it, right? So consumption, mm, we had y minus t, which was uh, effectively gave us disposable income. For investment, we endogenize investment, remember, and we get y and r, and we had g. If I were to write this down, this is a positive relationship. Uh, this is a negative relationship. This is a positive relationship. This is a negative relationship. So we were able to take a simple equation and uh, sort of talk about the determinants of consumption, determinants of investment. And so we need to do the same thing with M and X right now, right? So what are the determinants of export and import, okay. Uh, effectively, if X is going up, Y is X going up? Why is it going down? Why might M go up, M go down? We need to figure that out. Let's start with import, okay? So import effectively is a function of two things. One is Y and the other is this, okay? real exchange rate. So let's talk about them. First of all, why? Why is uh, domestic income? 
income output, whatever you call it. This is a positive relationship. If Y is going up, what that would mean is that the people of this country have more money. If you have more money, you want to buy more. So effectively consumption will be going up, but your consumption will include uh, some domestic products and some foreign products, some imported products, right? Uh, we don't know what that uh, ratio will be, how much domestic and how much imported products you will want, but it makes sense that when you consume more, you will consume more of both. So as a result, when Y goes up, import will go up. Okay. And the same is true for real exchange rate. Okay. Uh, so I've called this real exchange rate. Another way of thinking about this is to call it uh, price of domestic goods in terms of uh, foreign goods. If this go up, okay, if real exchange rate goes up. What that means is that domestic goods, the price of domestic goods are increasing in terms of foreign goods. So if we're talking about rice, for example, uh, if real exchange rate goes up, that means that price of domestic goods is going up in comparison to uh, foreign rice. And if that happens, what will we do? Since domestic products are becoming more expensive, foreign products are becoming more uh, are, are becoming cheaper, we will import more. We will prefer the foreign product more. And that is why uh, both uh, Y and uh, what is this? This is epsilon. Let's call it real exchange rate. Uh, that is why both Y and epsilon are positively related with M. If either one of these change, uh, uh, M will go up. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, let me write this down because this is quite interesting. If Y goes up, okay? So we see two effects. One is that M will go up. If M goes up, if we go back to this equation that we had, this equation, we have a minus here. So if M is going up, Z is going down, okay? But also notice that if E is going up, over here, we have an epsilon in the denominator. That means that one by E is going down, that's just maths, which would mean that Z is going up. So you see the interesting thing is that when, I mean, it can decrease as well. I'm just talking about increasing. If the real exchange rate is going up, we know that M import will be going up. That's not uh, up for debate. This is what happens. But what we do not know is that uh, because of real exchange rate going up, what effect there will be on the demand for domestic goods. Because we do not know, I mean, one thing is reducing it, another thing is increasing it, and we do not know which effect will be more, which effect will be stronger. So it may go up, it may go down. We'll talk about this in more details later on, but I just wanted to introduce you to this to you guys right now. So this was import. And now let's talk about uh, export is a function of, now here's the thing, export is when we're selling goods to another country, okay? It has nothing to do with our income. Like when we're selling RNG to India, for example, it does not matter what's happening to the income level in this country. So what matters is income in the other country. Remember asterisk, when, whenever we have asterisk as a superscript, it means that we're talking about foreign country. Like in the previous chapter, we used this to denote 
foreign interest rate. So that's what we're doing here. So export depends on foreign income and of course, real exchange rate, right? And the relationship is, this you guys can tell is positive as well. If income in another country is going up, then uh, just like when our income goes up, we buy more foreign goods. The same is true for people in other country. When their income go up, they will buy more foreign goods and their foreign goods are effectively our domestic goods. Uh, so when income in foreign countries go up, uh, our export will go up. And of course, this you should all be able to tell is a negative relationship, right? Because import and export are effectively opposites of each other. We're buying uh, here and we're selling here. And so changes in the exchange rate should have the opposite reactions, right? When exchange rate is going up, as we've discussed before, price of domestic goods relative to foreign goods is going up. Uh, as a result, we would expect our uh, export to fall. Okay. So now if we put all of this together and write the equation, what we will get is Z is equal to C Y minus T plus I Y y r plus g we knew this from chapter five and what we're adding here times m which is effectively y and e plus x export which is a function of foreign income and exchange rate right and if you guys want me to write down the relationships uh, the direction of the relationships. This is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative, G is positive, uh, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. Yeah, and you all can do that. Uh, so, okay, so this is a very important uh, uh, we call it equation. So notice that uh, what we had was just C plus I plus G in chapter three. Then in chapter five, what we did was uh, in endogenized investment and we got this much in chapter five. Now we're in chapter 18 and what we have done is further expanded this, okay? So important equation, we will be using this for the rest of this course. So please make sure before moving on to the next video, please make sure that you understand what is going on here. Okay, this is very important.